open the door to history. I will be reading the actual printed words in the Oregon State Journal, dated July 18, 1874. President Grant and family reach Long Branch on the morning of the 4th of July. It is the intention of the president to return to Washington every two or three weeks during the summer to transact such business as may require his presence at the Capitol. Lucky's Stable, 8th Street, Eugene. I am now prepared to furnish as good buggies and teams as can be found in this part of the country, and also the feed on the most reasonable terms. Give me a call, W.N. Lucky. Pittman's Chickens We had a good deal of trouble last summer with Pittman's chickens. As fast as we could plant anything in our little garden, those chickens of Pittman's would creep under the fence scratch out the seeds, fill up, and go home. When the radish bed had been ravished in this manner for the fifth time, we complained to Pittman. He was not disposed to interfere. Adler, he said, I tell you it does em good, and it does them beds good to be raked over by chickens. If I have radishes, give me chickens to scratch around em and eat up the worms. Radish that haven't been scratched ain't worth a cent. We then determined to take the law into our own hands. We procured half a peck of corn and two dozen diminutive fish hooks. Fastening each hook into a grain of corn, we tied thin wire into each hook. Then we scattered the whole of it on the radish bed and fix the ends of the wires to the biggest skyrocket we could get. The rocket stood in a frame about 10 yards away from the hooks. That very morning, Pittman's chickens came over and instantly began to devour the corn. We were ready, and as soon as it was evident that the hooks were all swallowed, we'd applied a match to that rocket. It is regarded as probable that no barnyard fowls that have ever lived since the days of old Noah ever proceeded towards the azure vault of heaven with such rapidity as those did. A fizz, a few ejaculatory cackles and puff of smoke, and Pittman's roosters and pullets were switching around among the celestial constellations without their feathers, and in some doubt, respecting the stability of earthly things. Pittman never knew what became of his fowls, but when we read in the paper next day that 24 underdone chickens with fish hooks in their craws had been rained down by a hurricane in New Jersey, we felt certain that the skyrocket had done its duty. Hoodlums this city is infested by as bad a set of young hoodlums as any town in the state. Boys of a very tender age are in the habit of cutting capers here that the oldest rowdies of older settled states arrogate to themselves. There must be something lacking when boys are allowed to roam the streets at night, play pranks on unoffending citizens which those in charge should attend to. One has but to stop on street corners of a night to hear language and witness sights enacted by boys, which ought to be ashamed. The officers of the city have it in their power to do away with much of this lawlessness, and we are surprised that no attempt has been made in that direction.
How to make good coffee. I have traveled some, and it is seldom that I find coffee fit to drink, especially at hotels. It comes to us pretty near cold, often full of grounds of a dirty black color. Very often, it is not deserving the name of coffee. All the cream and sugar you can put into it does not make it palatable. It is no more trouble to make good coffee than pour. First, wash the coffee clean, then dry it and brown it, but not burn it. The hopper full of common coffee mills is about enough for eight or ten persons, according to the strength of the person's want. Put the ground coffee in a bowl or coffee boiler. Add half an egg, then pour on enough cold water to wet it. Then pour on enough boiling water to suit the strength wanted. Let it sit five to ten minutes. Strain into another coffee pot and serve. Improvements. The St. Charles Hotel is now being raised about 15 inches. The porches have been taken down and will be put up in good style in a few days. The hotel will present a greatly improved appearance when the necessary improvements are made. We wish our friend Baker the best of success. Good square meals at 25 cents at the St. Charles Hotel, the largest hotel in Eugene City. The reason why all persons go to the St. Charles is that Mr. Baker does not employ Chinamen or Negroes in the cooking department. New industry. At the Astor House on Saturday and Sunday can be found a fine old colored gentleman who will black boots or shoes, for that matter, for one bit. No one who wishes to see his Dulcina or attend divine service should fail to give him a call.